Hey, everybody. All right. Um, as James said, state of SE Linux. My name is Paul Moore. I'm the SE Linux maintainer. Um, just talk about the things since we talked about this last year. So first slide is a container slide, um, because I was under the impression that you couldn't come to this conference and give a talk if you didn't have at least one slide about containers. So <laughs> put this at the front of the deck. Um, big thing this year is that we've added SE Linux support both to Rocket and to Run C. Um, and this joins our existing support that we've had for a while for Docker. So I think we've got at least all the big heavy hitters for container engines. I'm, I'm sure we're probably missing some, but we're getting there. Um, and a, a note on Docker, um, some of you may or may not be familiar with this, uh, especially if you don't play in the container space. The newer Docker versions actually do leverage Run C support, um, so they can make use of the support we added there. So in a sense, we've actually added SE Linux support to Docker twice and had it accepted. So, you know, take that, system D. Um, <laughs> you take your wins when you can get them, right? Um, We've also just recently, and I say just recently, but this is an effort that's taken quite some time. I don't think Vivek's here in the audience. No, okay. Um, Vivek and Dan Walsh and Stephen Smalley worked really hard over the past six, seven months to get SC Linux and OverlayFS working in a sane manner, um, which was <laughs> Tricky, um, but the nice part about it is um, this is something that the container guys really, really wanted for a long time, and we now have sane SC Linux labeling um, for all the different layers in the stack file system, and we've got all the SC Linux enforcement that you know and love um, working at the different layers. So uh, it's really cool. It's in the SC Linux next branch now. Assuming nothing horrible happens in the next few uh, next few weeks, that'll go into 4.9, fingers crossed. We've also added separate capability checks for the initial and non-initial user namespaces. Um, so this is interesting for containers, um, but the thing that was really tripping us up was Chrome, uh, which they like to run with their own user namespace. So now they have a different capability check. So the nice part is you can grant capabilities in a user namespace without granting it in the host namespace. So yeah, you can run Chrome again. Um, we've also made some improvements to our implementation of type bounding. Um, for those of you who have followed SC Linux and know new pros for some time, um, you know that's been kind of a little tricky. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to say after a few years now, I think we've actually kind of got it right, finally. Um, basically allows you to have your nice SC Linux bounded type hierarchy work uh, when you've got no new privs enabled. So this will be useful for you know, sandboxing applications. Like yesterday, we, we heard about Minijail. Um, Minijail, other applications similar to Minijail uh, will work much better now if they use SC Linux bounded types. Uh, another big area this year for us has been file systems. Um, we've introduced file label revalidation. Um, this is a big deal for distributed file systems where you've got multiple clients that can all be working on the same files and same file systems. Um, this allows one file to make an update that would need to basically invalidate the SE Linux label on all the other different clients. So we go ahead, we invalidate all those labels, and those clients have had the label invalidated the next time you actually make an access on that inode, we'll go ahead, we'll revalidate that uh, SE Linux label, generate the new correct label from the policy and everything, and you can keep going, you'll never even notice it. And the first implementation is actually GFS, and that support's been in f since 4.5. Nobody's complained, so we're assuming it's all working well at this point. We've also added uh, user space access to validate trans policy constraints via, you know, the SE Linux FS. Um, this is important for file systems that are built up in user space, so all your fused file systems, as well as any out of tree file systems that don't necessarily use all of the VFS hooks that are there. Um, it's kind of esoteric. I, if you don't really understand what this is, don't worry about it. But if you do, hey, we've got it. Um, but I don't think this really affects anyone in the room. And of course, I already mentioned the OverlayFS support that, uh, that's in the SE Linux Next branch now. And cross your fingers, goes to 4.9. I knew it was too good to be true. Right, let's try this again here. 
There we go. We're back. All right. So that's file systems. Labeled networking. Uh, this is a slide near and dear to my heart, although I think it's something that probably only about two people in the room are going to appreciate, myself being one of them. Um, quick show of hands. Other than if you've talked to me and I've told you about it, does anybody actually know what Calypso is? OK, Casey. All right, three. So we're up to four people in the room that actually care about this. That's, that's two times what I thought it would be. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I mean, this is, uh, this is something um, I, I've wanted to get into Linux for ages. And I actually, when I left my former employer, I had this about halfway done, but had to drop it because I hadn't gotten it cleared. And then it's hadn't had time. But Hugh Davies from Code Weavers, actually, and I, once again, I don't think he's here today. Are you here, Hugh? No. Um, he worked long and hard on this and got this going, and even, even worked with um, some users to do some interoperability testing with Solaris TX. So uh, this is in, it's in, in Linus's tree right now. It should be in Linux 4.8. Uh, you'll need to get a new version of NetLabel tools. It's currently in the main branch. As soon as 4.8 is out and golden, I'll do a final test with it, make sure it's happy, and then I'll have a new version of NetLabel tools. And I'll, I'll probably put a post up on my blog about how to use it. But anyway, it's basically, it's um, labeled networking for IPv6, it's standard based. So that's kind of the, the summary version of it. And there's everything else that I couldn't really categorize into a container slide, basically. Um, we've got new access controls for loading kernel modules. Um, we heard you know, Mimi talk about the, the kernel read file hooks. Um, we leveraged that to do access controls based on the calling domain as well as the label of the kernel module that you're actually trying to load in. Um, very similar, if you're familiar with the load pin stuff that Case did, very similar capabilities and functionality just with the SE Linux policy that you know and love. We've also expanded the exec stack uh, controls to all the individual thread stacks instead of just the main process stack. Um, nice thing to have. User space, we had a new SE Linux user space release earlier this year. Uh, version 2.5. Um, last year, you heard me talk that uh, we had just added a finer grained IOCTL access controls. And he was here. raise your hand. You were here earlier today. OK, you must have stepped out. Anyway, um, the Google guys worked hard to uh, give, her, give us finer grained IOCTL controls. Um, that support's finally now trickled into the user space. So you can go ahead and whitelist individual IOCTLs, which is good because high hackles are fun. Um, we have better SIL support. You can actually generate SIL via policy.conf now and better documentation and not to mention the usual list of bug fixes and various other small improvements. And SE Android. Um, you know, this is something maybe that not everyone follows all that closely, but I while I myself don't do a whole lot of work in it, um, you know, it still leverages the kernel work we do. It still leverages the user space that we do. And the numbers are kind of cool. Um, you know, last year there was a lot of talks uh, by Stephen Smalley, you know, explaining SE Android and how it works and whatnot. And KitKat basically introduced SE Linux enforcing mode test to Android. Now, if you were there for the talk, you know, he explained how it wasn't it wasn't everything on the system, but it was a lot of important pieces. It wasn't until Lollipop came out that we had SC Linux policies for everything on the system and everything ran in enforcing mode. Um, last year, we also saw that 60% of all the Android devices ran at least KitKat. So, you know, you had pretty good odds of having an SC Linux system in your pocket. Um, now we're up to 80%. And I, you know, I don't remember, I think Case was saying it was like, what, 1.4 billion devices back in 2015. So I think it's pretty safe to say that we have bare minimum a billion SE Linux devices out there in the wild. And the best part about it is they just work. Um, so I don't want to hear anything about how SE Linux is hard to use, guys. Come on. Um, <laughs> So anyway, and, and Lollipop, um, this is, once again, this is SE Linux on every part of the system. Uh, we're at, you know, 50% of the Android devices this year. So the, uh, the uptake is pretty good. It'll be interesting to see where we're at next year. Um, we might be pretty darn close to having SE Linux on pretty much all the Android devices. Yes? So, so how long you have 130% Android devices? 
because 130% is so much better than 100%. Come on. So wait, how do you get 100%? Oh no, because it's 80% of KitKat and above. Right, so 80% includes the 50% of the lollipop, see? What is it, lies, damn lies, and statistics, you know? So anyway, um, so two of the big functional improvements, um, <laughs> decompose the media server um, based on least privilege and wrote SE Linux policy for each of the, uh, the pieces. I'll let you figure out why that work happened. Um, <laughs> Also uh, leverage the IOCTL work that was done that we talked about last year to uh, tighten the restrictions on that. So nice improvements. There's all the other things. Um, there, there was no way these related to containers whatsoever, but um, Google announced uh, Brillo this year, which is the, the IoT OS, and that, that comes with SE Linux enabled and in enforcing mode. Uh, the open embedded folks have uh, shipped the updated SE Linux user space, so go nuts there if you're an open embedded developer. Uh, there's also the OpenXT project, which you know, we, we, we talk a lot about KVM you know, and, and containers, because those are the hot new things, but um, Zen still has a lot of interesting security properties um, if you're tinfoil hat is very thick. Um, and so the OpenXT project is working on basically a hardened virtualization client, and they're leveraging the Zen security modules, um, Flask, and SE Linux to help build that. So that's kind of interesting. I think it's, uh, it's openxt.org. Am I right, James? OK. Uh, Google, Google will find it, I'm sure. So anyway, and last, um, can I answer any questions you might have? And I'm pretty sure you've all seen these links before, but just in case, here they are. Uh, there's the kernel repository, the user space, and the kernel test that we use are up on GitHub, link to the reference policy on GitHub, the mailing list where we do all our development, and then if push comes to shove, you can always email me. Um, but if you have any questions, I would really encourage you to ask it on the list. That way everybody can benefit from the answer. Um, it's archived, it's much better that way. Um, you'll also probably get a quicker answer, and if I'm honest, probably a better answer, because 37 people will reply with all good comments other than me, you know, just kind of shrugging like, well, you could try this. So anyway, any questions? Sure. No, what, uh, all right, so what'll happen is when, you know, you've got, say, client A and client B, right? Client A does, and they both have the, act, they both have the file, they, they've got an inode, right? So file A um, does something to cause that label to get invalidated on file B. The next access check that SE Linux performs, all right, when we look at that inode, we'll see that, oh, hey, this file's been, the file label has been invalidated. We need to revalidate the file label. So it's gonna happen transparently to you. User space will never know. We just go ahead, we, we look it back up through policy, we, we regenerate the new SE Linux label and perform the access control. Um, so I, if you do something weird, you load a new policy in, I mean, it, there's, Theoretically, a case where you can go ahead and you know something would change, but once again, that's that's something that you've initiated to happen. You know, I mean, it's not going to happen magically. You would have to create a new policy. Um, revocation is really hard because um, you could always open a file and map it, and you know, game over. Um, It shouldn't block. Um, in fact, there were some interesting issues when we were first doing this, when it was in development, making sure that we didn't, um, didn't accidentally block in any place where we shouldn't, because that would be bad. Um, you can look at the code. I mean, I, we've got 20 minutes here, and I'm kind of pretty much out of time. But you can look at the patches and see. Um, we also, strangely enough, as an offshoot to this, when we were fixing some issues related to that, we actually 
sped up some stuff um, in the very beginning, like an early boot before you load policy. So theoretically, if your SC Linux system is booting, you know, like half a nanosecond faster now, you're welcome. <laughs> so anyway, uh, any other questions? All right, thanks a lot, guys.